How's it going everyone? My name is Mulder and welcome back to the Game Cron. Today we're looking at Biomutant 5 starting tips to know. These tips should help you out within the first couple hours of your game. I'll be going over these really quickly to help you sort out and build your character the way that you want while also exploring this world. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for a lot more. So to start things off, let's first talk about a place where you can get yourself some rare loot, which is called Bricktown, which is located close by the moment you jump into this game. You will find both common to rare to even legendary loot in this area once you solve a puzzle or two simply by going into all the shops and going underground. So it's definitely worth your time to go out of your way to go to every single shop, nook and cranny, and find every piece of loot as you can. I was able to find both legendary, common, and rare gear in this area that allowed me to customize and craft my own gear for my character to use in later battles. The second tip I want to go over really quickly is bio blub containers. Psy Shrines, and of course Junk Towers. I want to show you what these things look like so you can keep your eyes open for them in the open world. Psy Shrines look like this to where you will find these in random places across the map. The ones that I've discovered so far have been close to hilltops next to small towns, or inside outposts, once you've conquered them. Bioblub containers I have found in hidden bunkers to toxic areas, and Junk Towers I have found on the far outskirts of towns or on top of hilltops. Remember what these three things look like because they will help you build your character. Psy Shrines give you Psy Points where you can then use to build up on your character's special psychic abilities, bio blub containers can help you increase your mutations, and junk towers help you get more crafting material. Speaking of points, I want to quickly go over why it's so important to be saving all your bio and side points at the beginning of this game. Now I've been in this game now for about four hours and I have to honestly say one of the rarer things I've been having a hard time finding is side points. And given that the cost of some of the coolest abilities in this game can actually cost you a lot of side points, I recommend that you hold on to these as many as you can. Don't worry about facing difficult enemies. I've been playing this game on medium difficulty and I've been just crushing enemies left and right who are sometimes even twice my level even with the most basic of gear. This game is not heavily demanding in terms of how you can use your side points or how you want to spend your bio points. So it's wise of you to hoard these points until you truly want to unlock something that you really want. Not to mention the fact that there are going to be certain areas in this game that you can only survive in provided you have enough bio points fitted towards that special ability. For example, if you try to cross an area that's heavily toxic and you don't have enough bio points to fit into that toxic ability, you're just gonna die really quickly. But if you are hoarding these points and then spend them in times that you need them, you'll survive just fine. The fourth thing I wanna talk about is now your general perks. Now there are three things I invested some of my unlockable points into that have really been helping me out. So in perks in general, the first thing I recommend you unlock is luck out, which will increase your chance of getting loot by 10%. So if you're like me to where you like to build, craft, or sell a bunch of loot, get this perk immediately. The next perk I recommend you jump into is the Charmer, which opens up better dialogue opportunities for you. Depending upon how you talk to other characters, you can actually unlock experience points once you're done with a dialogue, or say a certain side mission. And then finally, the last perk I recommend in general that you focus in on at the beginning of this game is plating, where add-ons to clothes and equipment have their own armor value increased with 25%. So if you're looking to create a bunch of gear for your character, this is definitely a perk worth having. There are more perks in general that are worth your time looking into, but that's really up to you. These are simply just the three I've been using so far that have really helped me out. And now finally, the fifth tip I'm gonna talk about are outposts. Once you've selected a tribe that you wish to work with at the beginning of this game, there's gonna be around four main missions and a dozen or so side missions to do. But if there's one thing I definitely say you should jump into immediately once it's available is capturing outposts, because they will lend you three different rewards. The first thing is that once you capture an outpost, you'll unlock a tribal weapon. Depending upon what tribe you choose, this could be anything from a powerful melee weapon to even a ranged weapon. It depends on the tribe that you're working with. But the second most important thing to do after you get an outpost is that now you'll have shops and vendors to talk to, to where you can get armor, melee weapons, guns, you name it. To where you can either sell or trade items or gear you no longer need or would like to have using some green leaf. And then finally, the third reason that you should go out of your way to get these outposts is that after you conquer an outpost, you'll be treated not only to these shops, but you'll also be able to get a Psy Shrine at the end, to where you can finally get another Psy Point to unlock a certain ability you've been trying to get. I have yet to encounter an outpost that I managed to conquer that didn't have a Psy Shrine in it. You're pretty much guaranteed to have one every time you capture one of these places. I will also say too that in terms of gameplay and as a fun factor, these outposts are the best things to be doing right now at the beginning of the game, through my experience. It also allows you to unlock new abilities for your character depending upon if you're either good or evil in terms of either helping people escape from these outposts or sticking around and telling them to fight. But it's really up to you. But I'll be diving into so much more about this game in terms of types of crafting, 
weapons you can learn, along with what type of abilities are worth your time to invest into, and so much more. But as for right now, that's it for our Biomutant 5 starting tips to know at the beginning of the game. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for a lot more. As I said, I have more videos for Biomutant coming out, along with other videos on RPGs coming out later on this year. I'll also be planning to live stream the next RPG that will be coming out, which will be Dungeons and Dragons Dark Alliance, which will be out later on this month. But for right now, we're focusing on Biomutant. I cannot wait to dive more into this game and future RPGs with you very soon, but until then, my name is Mulder, and I'll see you next time in the Game Cron.